Welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be painting this beautiful beach scene and I'm just going to show you how I've reduced down some of the details here, just some of the rocks and also add in my own little figures. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I want to do, I actually want to change this reference picture a little bit. I'm going to move the horizon line up more because I want a bit more uh, sand coming in. So just trying to get in the general area where I want that to occur. So just around here, it doesn't go up too high, but it sort of comes in around this side. Um, also trying to be mindful uh, not to get in too many pencil lines in here. Just the general guide is fine with these beach landscapes. You just got to be careful. And now I'm going to go and get in some little rocks, some details here. So we can go ahead and just use that reference picture to put in a few little things, bits and pieces in here. So that's going to be a bit of rock there. We've got some um, another bit of rock here. There. Here as well. And what else do we have? Let's pop in. Just this little bit here, another another rock coming across. Have a bit of fun with these. You, you know, you're not trying to copy the reference picture exactly, but using those bits of rock as a decent reference. I'm bringing them closer uh, than they actually are in the reference photo too, just to make them more of a feature. Um, we've got larger ones coming in uh, from the side here like this as well. So just have a bit of fun, pop in some of these shapes. And another thing we want to do is just get in some shapes of these trees. So I'm just putting in generally where, where they are. And you've also got behind these rocks here, just some of these ones that are sitting um, near the water. So I'm going to be getting in some of those details like that and um, this is kind of where the water comes in and we've got trying to get a bit of effect here where we've got some uh, waves crashing against the rocks uh, some smaller ones in the distance as well but all of this is just bits and pieces of tree and shrubs that sort of thing coming in uh, Fantastic. Now, I want to get in just the area of the horizon line, so I'm going to put that about here, just where I want the water to start. Again, just try not to get too much of the pencil on the paper as well. Keep that line pretty straight. Just remember it's, a, it's more of a guiding line. And um, if you look at the, the sea, it's actually significantly darker than the sky. So I'm just going to have to be careful with that. Make sure that it has enough value when we're going in. So what I want to do now is that I want to add in a figure here. So I'm going to get them thinking maybe around here because we've got a bit of this rock and stuff going on over this side. So just get in a general shape of an umbrella like that. Um, look, I might change it around. I'm going pretty light because I don't want it to be, in case I want to change it a little bit, it's easier to rub out. But um, pop that here. They're kind of quite close, almost in the mid ground of the painting. And we're going to get the sunlight to follow the same pattern. So kind of sunlight coming in from the left side of the photograph. So shadow is going to be cast on this side. I'm going to get in a couple of kind of chair recliner things, people sitting here together, Maybe just a couple here on the beach. And let's have a bit of this, uh, let's get in this kind of um, shape maybe for the top of it. Here, I've got another bit here. 
But all we need to do is just get in some of their heads. So there we go. Um, we've got it there. He's got his hands, arms around his head like that. Um, and you know we've got another person just head poking up like that. So something simple, something simple like that that should do the trick. And remember that the shadow is kind of cutting across like that, and we're going to have a bit of the shadow coming in around here as well. But just marking out the general areas. This is all going to be in the dark. Uh, and we've got the umbrella, which is great. Um, there we go. Just some more little bits and pieces. Some darkness um, and also just an area behind that umbrella for the the um, other bits of it behind. Like that. Okay, and going up to the top like that. That should do the trick. And I also want to get in maybe a few figures here. So let's go ahead and, and uh, play around with them. Let's sort of just pop in a few couple, maybe just walking along the beach towards the water, so um, something like that, one leg in front of the other, and uh, both just walking towards the water, there, just, just like that, and we might have some shorts or something on, we can always play around with that uh, later as we get through. So, something simple there, um, and I might have another person just up here, coming towards, coming towards the, the camera, even a bit bigger, just the head a bit bigger, okay. Um, and I think that should do it for a pretty simple sketch. So let's get straight into it now. And I'm going to be picking up a round brush. So this is just, uh, this is actually a mop brush. So it allows me to get a fair bit of paint on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in some kind of bluish color in the sky and then I want to fade it down a little bit so that there's some pink in here. So well, firstly we'll mix up a fair bit of this yellow ochre on the palette. I'm just trying to re-wet it. It's quite... Sometimes when you don't re-wet paints for a while they just go really hard and you struggle. So just getting that little bit of yellow wet first for later when we do the sand but I'm going to be picking up this larger brush here and getting in some cerulean blue okay so I've got a fair bit on here let's drop that into the sky like that and um, work our way down the page so we're starting out actually a bit stronger on the top I might actually get a bit of cobalt blue in here as well, it just feels too weak. But remember not to make it too dark as well. We want to keep the sky to be almost the lightest section of the, the uh, painting. So bringing this down the page like that, just a really, really light wash. Put the paper in a slight slant as well. And as you move down the page, just add a bit more water and that will dilute it down and get you a little gradient as we move down the page. As we move all the way down here, what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of red, tiny bit of red, 
Um, let me just have a look, see how that feels. Just a little bit of this red. I might mix some yellow in it as well here and um, blend that in with the sky wash like that. Cut around the umbrella and go all the way down to where the water starts, the line of that water anyhow. So just about here and um, cut around that umbrella. If you get a bit of water on that umbrella, it's no big deal, but just try your best to cut around it. Um, now I'm gonna just play around and you add some darker sections and bits to the sky, a little to darken it down. There is just a little bit of, little bit of cerulean blue in here to darken up that top section really for the rest of it you don't want to play around with it too much um, you can do things like lift up uh, as well so you can lift up some paint to indicate some clouds and bits and pieces uh, here as well if you'd like things like that drop that in okay Bit more of that blue might add some darker blue in here as well just a little spot here and there to change it up like that okay fantastic and one thing I want to do is I want to get in some of this sort of greenish color for the trees so I'm gonna go pick up a bit of sap green to just drop that in uh, first. I've got a bit here left in the corner. There we go. Just a bit of sap green. I'm going to dull that down uh, with some of these greys on the palette. And um, here we go. We're just going to get in a little bit of green color through here. Some wet on wet effects like this. Um, I'm not going over the rocks. Maybe part of it like that, just touching the rocks. But that's all you want to do, just a very light green through this area. Okay. Now, here is uh, kind of an important part. We need to get in the area of the ocean at the back. And I'm going to be picking up a cobalt blue, quite a dark cobalt blue. And... Um, also a bit of cerulean mixed into it and it's almost a coffee colored uh, coffee consistency so pretty dark and let's give that a try at the back it's almost too dark let me um, use a flat brush as well so you notice this area is actually slightly damp and I want it to be slightly damp so that it kind of melts into the sky a bit but I also want it to have a nice um, you know, defining edge. So we, I'm going to just go ahead and pop that in like that. Now hopefully this doesn't spread all too much because I've let it dry for a bit, but I do want it to spread a little bit all the way to those trees there. Let's go across here as well. And then across here around that umbrella okay I think I've gone a little bit too high up on that right hand side so I'll just bring this up a little bit more okay that looks better and we're going to carry this wash down the page, but what we'll need to do as we go down is just lighten that wash. So I'm just putting in a bit of a little bit of um, water into that mix and carrying this down the page. So I'm just adding in water for everything, and um, importantly, just leaving in little bits of white on the paper as well to indicate. Uh, maybe some waves splashing against these rocks 
Now, if you don't get it in um, to start, if you don't get it right, don't worry too much about it because we can always go back with some gouache later. So just going, doing a bit of cutting around here, the umbrella. Bring this wash down the page here and um, where it mixes in with the yellow it turns almost this kind of turquoisey color so um, cut around these guys here on the beach you can just cut around the figures a bit so all using this flat brush And as we move down the page, I'm going to mix in a bit of this yellow. This is a bit of yellow ochre that I picked up before. So just get that to join onto that bit of uh, bit of water there while it's still wet. You don't have to do it in all areas, but in some areas it's definitely going to help. So it's just yellow ochre, a bit of yellow ochre like that. We can also go over some of these rocks too. That. Cut around these figures here. And these ones here, it doesn't really matter. We can go over them because they're going to be quite dark anyhow. Okay. And, um, this is meant to be very light in the background, so I'm just going to dull that down a bit just with some extra water through here. And I want to bring this wash down the page. And as we move down, we're going to darken as well. So I'm going to grab a bit of burnt sienna. Drop that in. And let's just get in a lot of this yellow ochre in here. Another color that you can use also is buff titanium. I've got a little bit a little bit left here in the palette. This kind of creamy color, creamy white color. We'll bring this all the way down the page. But tint. Just try to imply some lines here on the sand, some uh, little bits and pieces like that. Wet onto wet, of course. Um, and then we can also do things like uh, pick up some darker bits of paint on the palette and just sort of um, tap onto the Tap on like that to get a few little bits of um, bits and pieces, splatter effects as well. Could be rocks, who knows? So just to keep things interesting like that. And um, for the most part, we are done for the first wash. Okay, now for a bit of detailing. I'm going to get some... Uh, reddish color. This is just a bit of carmine and I'm going to pop that into the umbrella section here. So just a really light wash of carmine like that. 
using a little little flat brush, little round brush, I mean. And I'm using a warmer colour because we've got this bluish, uh, this blue colour in the background of the sea, so this is just going to contrast and make things look interesting. So make sure I've got enough paint on here. Okay, fantastic. I think that's about all I need for that at the moment. Um, for the figures, I also want to get in some colors. So let's go ahead. I'm going to get in some purple actually. Just a purplish color for this fella. holding the brush a little bit further down to get more control. This is just going to be what the person's wearing. Um, and I'm going to change the directions of the legs as well. Put, put one in like that very quickly. And the other one will get in some, let's have a look here, let's get in a bit of red as well. A tiny bit of red. Right. The other one, I'm just going to get a kind of grayish color, like that. Just as long as this color is a bit darker than the sand, so that they do pop out more. That's the main thing. Okay. Great. Just going to get in some indications of their legs, like that. Um, you know, we've got these figures sitting down to the side here as well, and I'm going to get in the umbrella, bit of the umbrella, a bit more kind of detailing going on in underneath the umbrella, just some implies of darkness. But I'm going to get this stem in quickly. That I don't actually need to darken this a little. Okay. Some little lines on top of the umbrella as well. That okay, some color into these figures sitting on the beach, so it's a bit of color for the heads. Bit of red there, a bit of red here for the, for this person's arms, like that. Um, you know, a bit of red for these figures here also in the distance, like that. That can just blend into the body and also the legs um, too, so like that. Kind of just walking along the beach. Whether you want to pop the hands in, that's up to you. Um, I do want to just get in a quick indication like that. This hand coming across, this one's coming to the side. Um, this one's coming across to the side like that as well. No big deal.
these chairs that they're sitting on, I'm just going to darken them out a little as well. You don't need to get too much in for those. This is all going to be darkened down later anyhow. And also these trees here inside and the rocks, that kind of thing. I'm going to be using some neutral tint to imply some tree shapes here. And I'm actually going to use a smaller flat brush for the rocks. I think it's going to make it a lot easier for me. So let's pick up some of this paint, just a bit of um, purplish paint. Okay. Give it a go. And uh, again, indicating this light that's coming in from the left-hand side. So like that, you can indicate the sides of the rocks. Um, that. That's all you really need to do. The ones in the background, they just need to be darkened a bit more. Um, I might use some brown as well, a bit of sepia mixed in here, just to draw them out of the water a bit more. Like that, that's better. A line of rocks in the distance there. Like that. more darkness onto these rocks as well just in the outer edges a more, little more detail like that. Um, what I'll do is just also get a little, little bit of dry brush going on here on the ground to um, just indicate some uh, debris and things like uh, seaweed maybe washing up on the shore. Just very light little marks near the water. I don't want to do it everywhere, just a little bit here and there. And um, some bits and pieces also here in the, in the foreground. Uh, just dry off that brush and just to you know, make some marks and scribbles and things like that. There could be footprints, who knows. Um, but it does help to make things look more interesting. I might just uh, use this almost as a directional line coming in like this. Like that. I do want most of the strokes to be kind of around the right hand side. I've got some kind of larger um, sort of lines like this coming in as well. Here we go. And for the trees and things like that, we're going to just use some more, um, use a bit of green here, a bit of this uh, emerald green. Yeah, this is already a greenish color here, but I'm going to just add in a bit more dark green. And, uh, around these rocks down the back, especially. Over here. And um, leave some of that previous wash there as well. Don't color the whole thing in. And I'm just putting in a bit of blue in here to darken down that green further. And um, what I'm going to do is just get some indications of this tree branch. Uh, this is neutral tint and I'm also going to pick up some brown as well. 
that. There. And uh, another branch sort of coming in. You exaggerate this a bit more from the side like that. There we go. Should do the trick. And uh, also got this one here. A bit more brown, I think. That's just put too much purple in there. Right, and uh, bits of bits of other green and things in here too. Remember, this is all kind of uh, shrubs and bushes and stuff. So we need to just get in some of these leaves that are coming up. go. Bits of some leafy areas which I think I'll just join up later with some smaller sort of branches. Using that texture of the paper to imply um, these leaves as well. So I'm leaving some of this previous wash in there. It's really the only way to do it. I can use the smaller round brush. Start working on uh, some of the trees a bit more. Draw out these branches a uh, to get some uh, smaller details in, like that. Really just being careful not to overdo it as well. Notice this is almost the darkest area of the painting. And the trees are coming out from behind these rocks. So just using some layering and some of this, you can really get in some interesting effects and a range of tones which will bring the painting together. So I'm going to now just uh, go over some of these rocks a bit more to emphasize that shadow on the kind of edges of them uh, like that. So it's really not... Um, Layering. Use the flat brush. Go back into it. Actually, this is gonna help. Just want to soften off some of these edges. Let some of them dry, uh, kind of as a hard edge as well. Don't. Don't be afraid of leaving some hard edges in your paintings. You need a combination of them. Hard and soft edges. Okay. Just applying little details like that. All comes together at the end of the day. Um, and there's some smaller rocks here as well. So it doesn't all just sort of start it all at once. Okay.
leave leave that area for now if I can um, start working on some other areas. I think I've just been playing around with these trees for too long. Um, always important to get a balance in your painting of details so that uh, one section just doesn't stand out all too much. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go over to these figures now and start getting into these darker areas. So I've got neutral tint and popping that over here, we're going to get in these sort of shadowy shapes here in the ground to indicate the um, the shade. So this is just neutral tint and a bit of blue, I think, mixed in from that previous wash. That. Pretty dark. Trying to be careful with these shadows as well. I don't want to go too, uh, too much to the left. I'll soften that with my finger as well. Have it sharper here. This is edge. That. There you go. Just a couple of guys underneath the umbrella. That's all I wanted to portray. And with these these figures here, I'm gonna just go in and. I get a little bit of shadow running down the side of their legs here, just a bit darker, and join that on to the ground and just get in a, a kind of shadow like that as they're walking towards um, the water. And you can put on things like a, sort of a bag or something he's holding like that. And this one's got another bag here, and uh, you know, a bit of a play around. Maybe some hair for these people. Like that. Some little marks on their clothing to indicate some shadows and things like that uh, running through the clothes. Shadow to the right hand side of them. Just indicate again the white source to the to the uh, coming in from the left. Okay. Fantastic. Get some birds in. Holding the brush closer to the tip, like that. It's going to bring the sky forward. Uh, so it's going to push the sky back. And just add in a few birds at the distance. Especially near the horizon line as well. Okay, finally just adding in the last remaining darker sections of the painting. Um, I might just try to darken off these areas more as well. Bits underneath the umbrella. 
that I want to draw out, draw some attention to. And, uh, that shadow as well. Figures, maybe a bit of darkness on the right hand side of them. That. Some of the rocks here in the, the ocean as well. Darken a few of them down. Not all of them. Okay. What I'm going to do to finish it off, I'm going to pick up some white gouache and uh, see if I can just get in some more indications of waves. I know we've got a bit here, but uh, I want to just get in a bit more of that white. So I've got some white gouache already kind of mixed up on the palette. And I'm going to just go in there and see if we can pop in a little highlight there on the shoulders. Probably need some new gouache. white running through to indicate some uh, waves just crashing into the rocks in the distance uh, maybe have a some waves in here as well a bit of white that's all it is a bit of white gouache Fantastic. And a little bit on the shoulders of the figures too, just to get some basic highlights in. Bit of water. Here for these fellas sitting down. branches as well coming out from here just uh, maybe highlighted ones like that to uh, switch things up a bit Go into these trees a little bit more as well. Really just finishing touches um, and when putting in hair. I never really did that before, but getting 
doing some darker bits, just running through the side like that. And I'm going to call that one finished. Check out these tutorials down the side here. I've got a couple of playlists that will help you get some ideas and improve your watercolors.